Yo, people, yo, people. I'm going to be reacting to this video here. Why are some voters of color backing Trump? And I have a number of theories on this, but before I get into those, let's play the video first. Let's go. Okay, let's talk about the fresh wave of polling out last month. It shows that the Biden campaign is losing support from voters of color in a presidential race that is going to be so, so close. The panel rejoins. Um, Ron uh, Brownstein, I, I want to talk to you about this because your new piece on CNN.com really digs into this question mm -hmm. that the Biden campaign has about how they are losing ground and how much ground they are losing with non-white voters. What have you learned and what, what are they paying attention to? What do we need to be paying attention to? Yeah, I mean, the racial dynamics in this race uh, could be unprecedented, and they are certainly fascinating. Donald Trump at this point is polling not only better than he did in 2020 among both black and Hispanic voters, he's polling better, Casey, than any Republican presidential nominee since the civil rights era. Uh, you know, in the routinely getting in the 20s now in polls, both nationally and in the key states among black voters and around 45 among Hispanic voters. And all of that has understandably received a lot of attention. The other side of the racial ledger, though, has received, I think, uh, surprisingly little attention, which is that Joe Biden, at this point, is matching or even slightly exceeding his 2020 number among white voters in virtually all national uh, and swing state polls. And if Biden can, in fact, maintain that support, it kind of flips the central issue in this uh, in this campaign, it I think it really becomes whether Donald Trump all the way through November can defend these beachheads in black and Hispanic communities while running on such a racially polarizing agenda with ideas like mass deportation, internment camps, unilateral military action against Mexico, ending diversity and inclusion efforts and pardoning the white supremacists who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Right now, he's getting the best of I will let him continue on in a moment. I just thought this was so, this is interesting already to begin with. So, you know, he just said that, you know, Joe Biden is gaining amongst white voters, but yet Trump is gaining amongst black voters. But then at the same time, it says that it's the racial rhetoric of Donald Trump. What? So, so Donald Trump is engaging in this racially, I think he said racially divisive rhetoric. I think that's what he said. Something in that, something like that. And yet somehow... Black people are choosing to vote for Joe Biden more than they, e sorry, for Donald Trump, more than they ever have for a Republican since the civil rights era, as he just said. And the white voters are choosing to, apparently to vote for Joe Biden more than they were before. So isn't that interesting, right? So Donald Trump is this racially divisive guy, right? And yet somehow, you know, him and his pardoning of white supremacists, apparently, which, which we'll get to in a moment. This, this somehow, some way, right, in spite of his racially divisive rhetoric, somehow, some way, black people are choosing to vote for him as a Republican nominee more than they ever have for another Republican nominee since the civil rights era. How exactly did that happen? Does somebody want to explain that one to me? I always find this stuff funny, right? Why is there never, like, I've been doing this series, MSM Lols. This is episode 23. Why does nobody ever talk about Joe Biden? Why is it always about Trump all the time with Trump? All the time is always go off getting getting Trump for something. Like, you know, CNN will do themselves a real service, and I mean this with sincerity. They do themselves a real service if they actually just tried a bit better. If they did a better job of being neutral, like I think they are supposed to be. What's neutral about this? This guy is bashing, he's bashing Donald Trump, and he's not even making sense while he's doing it. They're pulling up polls saying that. Donald Trump is up among Hispanic voters. I think that's what the poll said. They're pulling up. They're pulling up polls saying that Donald Trump is mo the most popular Republican among Black voters since the Civil Rights era. But then he's he, then he's labeling Trump with divisive rhetoric, you know, racially divisive rhetoric, pardoning white supremacists. If that were true, then why are Hispanics and Black people choosing to vote for Donald Trump? more than they were before. Well, I don't know if that's true for Hispanics, but it said 47% for Hispanics for Trump and 44 for Biden. If he's so racially divisive, then why are they choosing to vote for him? And they don't, like, this is my thing with CNN, bro. You, you, could, you could just do yourselves a massive favor if you just didn't do this. And if you do this, if you bring a guy like this on, 
right? Have somebody to oppose him. I don't even necessarily mind you bringing somebody like him on, but have somebody competent to oppose what he's saying, to actually make some arguments against him. Because it's not fair that I keep seeing this all the time now when I react to CNN or MSNBC. I keep seeing this stuff where these guys come on, these, these people come on and they just say things about Trump. He's racially divisive. He's an insur- I don't know. He's an insurrectionist, racist, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And then they never bring anybody on to actually ever defend Trump ever. And this is one of my theories. One of the theories as to why not just black voters, but voters in general don't like Donald Trump. It's because of stuff like this. They turn on the news. CNN, which is which is supposed to be neutral. They turn on the news and then they just hear well, the news, the supposedly neutral news, which honestly I disagree with, but yeah. And they hear Trump is racist, Trump is sexist, he pardoned white supremacists, this, that, and the third, his racial rhetoric. They hear this. And the problem is, is that with a lot of people is that, and it's a shame, I really want people to start engaging their, their brains a little bit more when it comes to this stuff. A lot of people, I think, because, because of a multitude of reasons. There are a lot of people out there, right, who don't engage in politics a lot. And so when CNN tells them something, like when CNN says, oh, Trump has racially divisive rhetoric, they just go along with it. They just go along with it. Like, oh, okay. Well, I'll just say it then. But they don't really know why. Then there's other people who have bought into this, right, who have bought into this, really, and they really believe it. And you, do, and I'd, I'd really like for them to explain exactly why it is that Trump is, is up among black voters then. Please do explain. I'd like to know. But see, again, already already making no sense. Why, and also, just as a quick note before I continue the video, and I will. What is this 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 white supremacy stuff? This is a new one now. I thought I, I've told all kinds of things about January 6th, insurrectionists and blah, blah, blah. Right. White supremacy was a new one. Right. I thought they were insurrectionists. Now they're white supremacist insurrectionists. OK, just just I'm just gathering the labels together, apparently, because apparently there's even more to add on now. As to as to who was a January 6th, not just insurrectionists, but white supremacists now. OK, well, let's go. Let's carry on. To both worlds, he's energizing his socially conservative base. We were talking about in the last segment with a lot of these very racially tinged, polarizing ideas, and he's winning an historic number of uh, non-white voters, primarily around other issues like inflation and the economy. If he can maintain that tightrope all the way to November, very hard to beat. If Democrats can push him off that tightrope, the race could look very different. Given that Biden, somewhat surprisingly, I think is basically where he was among white voters when he won in 2020. Hmm, Interesting. Ron, for people who, I mean, you pointed out all of the ways and places, or many of them, why some people might kind of scratch their heads about why these voters might be willing to uh, back Trump. And I do think there's certainly some frustration when I talk to uh, people in these communities who get lumped together as people of color. I mean, Hispanic communities, there's all kinds of different groups of people across the country. Obviously, black communities, have something uh, similar, then you lump those people together, right? We don't want to do that. Um, But when you kind of pull these pieces apart, why is it that many Hispanic voters seem to be willing to go with Donald Trump and then separately black voters? Like, how do you explain why this is happening? Well, there are long-term trends and there are short-term trends. There's no question that Uh, voters of color have been increasingly subject to the same realignment along educational lines uh, that has reshaped political, you know, allegiances in the white community for 50 years. At least for the last decade, we have been seeing that, especially among men, uh, with Republicans gaining and Trump gaining among non-college, non-white men, uh, obviously not to the same degree that they do among non-college white men, but kind of along the same trajectory. But I think the proximate cause of what we are talking about uh, is inflation and the sense among uh, many voters living at or around the median income or below the median income uh, that life is just more of a squeeze than it was from what they remember the early years of the Trump presidency. I mean, one Democratic pollster said to me that the nightmare phrase, that's his phrase, that he he hears in focus groups all the time is, I I don't like Donald Trump, I don't like what he says, I think he's a racist, but if I'm being honest, I have more money in my pocket at the end of the week when he was president. That is a serious problem for Democrats, but it is also true that there is very little awareness in the states that count uh, um, in, in, in communities of color about the kind of things that I mentioned before, you know, mass deportation, yeah. military 
against Mexico, uh, ending all uh, diversity and inclusion uh, efforts. Um, and, Demo you know, the question will be. Hmm. OK, that, well, that was something to hear. I listen to this and I just really struggle with this kind of stuff because, again, you, you hear the whole the, the thing about, oh, well, you know, it's, he's doing well amongst non-college educated. OK, cool. Well done. Well done to him. That last point, I'll be honest, it caught me off guard a little bit. I was like, well, it's not doing well in these states because there's not a lot of knowledge about his deportation views, his mass deportation views. What do you mean exactly by mass deportation? Do you mean that illegal immigrants get deported? <laughs> like, it's, it... And Democrats wonder why they struggle so much. If this is like, it... I, don't, I don't know the numbers, but I have a feeling that Americans are fairly supportive of the idea of illegal immigrants getting deported. Not just because, you know, it's illegal to break into the United States effectively. To enter without permission and stay there without permission. Not only because of that, but because it's unfair to the people who are waiting in line. If we imagine for all the people who are waiting in line, it's a lot harder for them now. Because of the numbers of people that are coming over that are illegal, it makes it a lot harder for those who are applying legally. Because there's not enough space, because of what illegals are taking up. But they say, oh, well, there's not enough knowledge. There's not enough. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, nobody's ever called Trump a racist with racial rhetoric and, and this, that and the third. And no one's ever talked about how, you know, of his mass deportation and all this other stuff and his ending of DEI, diversity and equity and inclusion and this other crap. Oh, yeah. It's, it, this is this is hilarious. This is a hilarious take. That it's actually Trump's policies that no one knows. No one knows what Trump thinks. No, I mean, Biden is all out in the air. Everybody knows what Joe Biden thinks. Nobody knows what Trump thinks. Right. Okay. Because Trump's not on the news every five seconds. Right. It's not like every single word he says at every single rally is precisely dissected by the left, so that they can they can find little tidbits. Because that's that's how it is for me. When I look at these people, I'm like, they find these, they go into Trump and they'll find these little tidbits and they'll go, oh, look, this is proof of his racism, his sexism, his this and his that. Right? You're telling me those people don't exist? Everything Trump says is carefully, carefully dissected. Let's not be delusional here. Let's not, let's not be delusional by people on the left. This is exactly what they do. Let's be abundantly clear about that. The idea that like oh, people just don't know what Trump thinks about mass deportation. I, again, I don't know the, the 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 demographics, right? But this is one thing I found interesting. I don't know the demographics of people who come over the border, but I would guess they're mostly Hispanic, right? The majority race is Hispanic, I guess, or ethnicity, or whatever you call it. And yet he's leading among Hispanic voters, as they put up on on screen earlier. Is isn't that interesting? So what's the argument for that then? So, so I like I said, I would guess that most of the illegal immigrants coming over the border are Hispanic. Trump might be saying he wants to deport them, which honestly I haven't heard him say, but he might have said it. Right. But yet still, in spite of saying that, Trump is leading amongst Hispanic voters. How is that? Uh, is, is this man really trying to tell me that that's because they, don't, they just don't know? They just don't know. The Hispanics, they just, they just don't know it. They don't know what he has to say, really. Really. So the, Hispanic, so the Hispanic people are uninformed. Like, it's incredible. Like, do you not hear how, how rude this is to Hispanic voters? Do, does this guy not hear that it's very rude to Hispanic voters to say, well, well you know, or to black voters or to whoever it may be, well, well, the reason why they want to they want to support Trump is because they're just, they're, you know, you're effectively saying they're ignorant. Let's be real about this. They're ignorant. They don't know what Trump has said about this and that and that and this. They don't, they're not informed. Like, what is this? Isn't this highly racist? Oh, those minorities, they're just not informed enough. That's why they vote for Trump. Isn't that, like, again, isn't this highly, highly racist? Highly racist. I don't even think he realizes he's doing this. Because this is the thing with a lot of these people. They don't, they don't realize it. They think they're the non-racists. 
they think they're the non-racist because left left people on the left are generally very incoherent. That's just a general consistent trend, if I'm being honest. And so a lot of the times they don't hear this kind of stuff. But this idea that well, it's just because they don't know. There's not a lot of information. Oh, oh, oh. What do you mean there's not a lot of information? You turn on the TV, you turn CNN on, you got this guy stood there, sat there saying that Trump has racially divisive rhetoric and this, that, and the third, and that he pardoned white supremacists. Right? So what do you mean there's not enough information? What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't get it. Go on Twitter. <laughs> like, go on Twitter. Go watch CNN, MSNBC. You're telling me there's not enough information about all the things that, that Trump has apparently done and said. There's more than enough information on what Trump has said. Trust me. It's, isn't, it, isn't it kind of racist to assume that the only reason is because they don't know? Maybe it's because they know what you're referring to and either they agree or they think you're mischaracterizing it. Or when you, when you say, oh, Trump has racially divisive rhetoric, maybe they listen to Trump and thought, no, nah, I don't think he does, actually. No, nah, I think you, 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 you know, you're not. You're kind of off. Maybe that's why. Maybe they, maybe they looked at what you said, found out for themselves, and were like, you know what? Nah, this guy, he's waffling. I'm a good fan. I'm not listening to him. Maybe, just maybe, that's what happened. As opposed to, oh, it's those. Oh, it's because they don't know. It's because they don't know. If they knew, they'd agree. They'd agree with us, but it's because they don't know. There is enough information. Who believes that? Who believes that, like, black and Hispanic voters don't have enough access to information? Like, what? Who, who actually believes this on a serious level? They're just, they're just not informed enough to know who to vote for. Like, what? What is this? <laughs> what is this? And then it'll be people on the right that'll be the racist ones. We're the, we're, it's, it's us. We're the racist ones, apparently. That's highly racist. Why do they have to agree in monolith with you? In a kind of a monolithic group? Why do they have to agree with you? Maybe they listened to what you said and thought, eh, no. Disagree. Denied. He also, this is also the ironic part before I end this video. He says, oh, well. He goes and he says, you know, I heard from some guy, I can't remember who it was, that focus groups are telling me that, that they're saying that, yeah, I think Trump is racist, but I have more money in my pocket now than, than, than on, well, I did under Trump than I do now. And I found that hilarious just because it's like, first of all, how bad your economic policy has to be that people are willing to vote for a racist. Like, imagine being a black person, right? And you think you think Trump is racist. And you vote for him anyways, just because Joe Biden's policy is so trash, so garbage, that you vote for you vote for Donald Trump, even though you think he's a racist. That's incredible. That's incredible. Then, even even worse, like don't need like, I would say to a lot of people, right? If you're saying you think Trump is racist, and at the same time you had more money in your pocket before with Trump than you do with Joe Biden. Have you ever considered that maybe Trump isn't a racist? Because if he was a big old racist, you'd have no money. You'd like he'd be working hard to make sure you have nothing in your pocket, right? He would. And if Joe Biden was the anti-racist, he'd have built upon the foundations that Trump did. He'd he'd have he'd have you know taken all the things that were making you prosperous and boosted them. And instead, somehow you're poorer. Doesn't that indicate to you that maybe Trump isn't a racist? That's what I would say to them. But let me know what you lot think about this down below, bro. I thought this was just, uh, uh, I didn't I didn't enjoy listening to that, but I thought it was important to react to. But yeah, let me know what you lot think down below. Remember, remember to like and subscribe and see ya.